there is currently fierce debate about the future of particle physics. Influential voices insist that we should not be building larger, more powerful, higher energy colliders to peer into the higher energy frontier without firmer theoretical assurances regarding what we might find. However, larger colliders are not our only window on the universe at ultra high energy scales. The universe itself is constantly bombarding our planet with particles more than a million times more energetic than collisions at the Large Hadron Collider. The cosmos is constantly irradiating us with ultra high energy cosmic rays and almost certainly ultra high energy neutrinos. Capturing ultra high energy neutrinos promises us insight into particle physics at energy scales orders of magnitude higher than those accessible in any earthly lab. Their capture could feel for the edges of the standard model and illuminate the path forward for particle physics, while providing deep insights into the nature and evolution of our universe. Today we will delve into the nature of these ultra high energy cosmic poltergeists, understand how they can be captured and realize what they tell us about the furthest depths of our observable universe. We will also address the realization that it may be possible to detect and study these elusive cosmic messengers, not by building a complicated, intricate, expensive machine, but by turning to the natural world, by utilizing the resources of the unspoiled wilderness, by harnessing forests. We often view forests as pristine, beautiful, down to earth, an obstacle that has to be swept aside by the advancement of human civilization. Today, we will see that nothing could be further from the truth. Alongside building increasingly larger and more powerful man-made particle colliders, perhaps we can ask the natural world to attempt to understand itself. So what are ultra-high energy neutrinos? Ultra-high energy neutrinos are ghostly standard model particles with energies greater than 10 to the 18 electron volts. 1 exa electron volts, 1 million billion electron volts that are predicted to exist and permeate our universe. These energies are a thousand times higher than the most energetic astrophysical neutrinos detected to date by the ice cube experiment in Antarctica, another key to understanding astroparticle physics at the highest energy scales. These particles were predicted to exist as early as the 1960s and have long been sought after. However, as yet, they have never been observed. However, today, we stand on the brink of finally capturing and studying these ultra high energy cosmic poltergeists. For 400 years, we mostly stuck to light, photons, electromagnetic radiation, and traditional telescopes to understand the distant universe. But at the start of the 20th century, Victor Hess discovered cosmic rays, high energy particles bombarding the upper atmosphere and opened a new window on our universe. In the last decade, LIGO has established gravitational waves as yet another probe of our universe. The age of multi-messenger astronomy has arrived and neutrinos are a vital cosmological Hermes. The field of neutrino physics is incredibly active and rich. Two Nobel Prizes have been awarded in the field since the turn of the century. Massive projects such as Dune and Hyper Cameo Candy are dedicated to studying these particles in exquisite detail. With the first detection of high energy astrophysical neutrinos at Ice Cube, the time to study neutrinos at the highest accessible energy scales and to launch the field of ultra high energy neutrino physics is now. But why do we want to study ultra high energy neutrinos? Well, first of all, we want to know whether they're there, where they come from, and what they can tell us about ultra high energy cosmic rays. It's a decades old mystery where the most energetic particles hitting our atmosphere originate in the universe. Ultra high energy cosmic rays, mostly protons and atomic nuclei, smash into our atmosphere with energies in excess of 10 to the 19 electron volts. 10 exa electron volts. That's roughly the kinetic energy of a Djokovic tennis serve or a Ronaldo free kick, all concentrated onto something as small 
as an atomic nucleus. These particles have energies more than a million times those of the protons circulating at the Large Hadron Collider. Ultra-high energy cosmic rays are likely accelerated to such monumental energies by powerful cosmic accelerators, like supermassive black holes and supernovae, located outside the Milky Way at distances of a few gigaparsecs and in the far reaches of the observable universe. They then traverse these cosmological distances and smash into the Earth. However, despite scientists' efforts, no individual source of ultra-high energy cosmic rays has ever been identified. That's because it's incredibly difficult to determine where these ultra-high energy cosmic rays are coming from. Cosmic rays are electrically charged, so they're bent by the magnetic fields that exist in intergalactic space and inside the Milky Way. As a result, the direction with which they arrive at the Earth does not point back to their point of origin. While traversing the cosmos, ultra-high energy cosmic rays also randomly interact with cosmic photon fields that permeate the universe, including the cosmic microwave background. In these interactions, ultra-high energy cosmic rays are either completely destroyed and so never reaches at the Earth, or lose a significant amount of their energy, which further aggravates their magnetic bending. So how can we ever determine where these ultra-high energy cosmic rays are coming from if they don't point back to their source? Well, ultra-high energy neutrinos may provide a workaround. Neutrinos are incredibly light, electrically neutral, and hardly interact with matter, and never directly with photons. Neutrinos do not bend in the universe's magnetic fields, nor are they destroyed or sapped of energy in interactions with cosmic photons. They are able to reach the Earth, even at the highest energies, and from the most distant of locations. It's likely that neutrinos are produced in interactions in dense environments around ultra-high energy cosmic ray sources. For example, when cosmic rays are accelerated in the vicinity of a black hole, smash into accreting matter, and produce ultra-high energy neutrinos that stream towards the Earth in straight lines. These neutrinos point back to individual sources when detected at the Earth, so they're capable of revealing individual ultra-high energy cosmic ray sources. In 2017, scientists at the Ice Cube Neutrino Detector in Antarctica traced the path of a single high-energy neutrino to a previously known but little studied blazar, TXS 0506 plus 056, the nucleus of a giant galaxy that fires off particles in massive jets, powered by a supermassive black hole at its core. Scientists hope to play this same pointing trick with the very highest energy neutrinos. Ultra-high energy neutrinos can also reveal far more about ultra-high energy cosmic rays than just where those particles are coming from. Interactions between ultra-high energy cosmic rays coming from all directions in the universe with the cosmic microwave background photons can produce ultra-high energy neutrinos as a byproduct. These neutrinos are known as cosmogenic neutrinos. In 1966, Kenneth Griesen, Georgi Zapatsin, and Vadim Kuzmin predicted that cosmic rays with energies above roughly 50 exa-electron volts from sources greater than 50 megaparsecs away from the Earth should not reach the Earth, as they have had sufficient time to interact with the cosmic microwave background during their traversal of the universe and to be destroyed. This cutoff is known as the GZK cutoff. Note that it's based on the assumption that all cosmic rays are protons, so we do observe a small number of ultra-high energy cosmic rays that exceed this limit, such as the recent Oh My God particle. However, the cosmic rays that we do see and study seem to have a well-known flux and energy spectrum that displays roughly the predicted cutoff. It appears that ultra-high energy cosmic rays do interact with the cosmic microwave background and disappear from the spectrum we see. Our current understanding of particle physics tells us that the interaction of ultra-high energy cosmic rays with cosmic microwave background photons should produce ultra-high energy neutrinos. So if it turns out that these ultra-high energy neutrinos do not exist and cannot be detected, we would need to reassess our entire understanding of particle physics and the ultra-high energy universe. So attempting to uncover ultra-high energy neutrinos is a win-win. 
we either overturn our theories of the high energy universe or access a powerful new tool to probe its properties. Ultra high energy neutrinos should inherit about 5% of the energy of their parent ultra high energy cosmic ray. Therefore, neutrinos of energies around 10 to the 19 electron volts are created from cosmic rays of energies 20 times higher, which do not reach the Earth unless they're produced nearby and don't have time to be deflected by magnetic fields significantly. Therefore, by studying ultra high energy neutrinos, we indirectly study 200 exa electron volt cosmic rays. These are cosmic rays at the very end of the observed energy spectrum. Cosmogenic neutrinos provide the only viable way to study the highest energy cosmic rays. The energy spectrum of ultra high energy neutrinos encodes information about the parent ultra high energy cosmic rays. Notably, their energy distribution, mass composition, and the maximum energy that they can possibly reach. This information is vital when attempting to narrow down the list of candidate ultra high energy cosmic ray sources. Cosmogenic neutrinos also carry information about the population of such sources, their number density and distances from the Earth. If we want to pin down the nature and distribution of ultra high energy cosmic ray sources, we need to detect and study cosmogenic ultra high energy neutrinos. Studying ultra high energy neutrinos also allows us to test particle physics at the highest energy scales. Ultra high energy neutrinos have energies millions of times higher than collisions at the Large Hadron Collider, energies far beyond those accessible in the laboratory. These particles also travel phenomenal cosmic distances without interacting, meaning that even tiny deviations of a neutrino's behavior from standard model predictions may be able to accumulate and become observable. Ultra high energy neutrinos provide a means of directly investigating processes that occur at energy scales of one exa electron volt and above in the distant universe. Ultra high energy neutrinos can probe neutrino oscillations at the very highest energies and longest traversal distances. There are three types of neutrinos, the electron neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino. Nobel Prize winning experiments have shown that these neutrinos can oscillate and switch from one type or flavor to another. As such, ultra high energy neutrinos that have traveled huge distances are expected to arrive at the Earth with nearly equal fluxes of each of the three types of neutrinos, given the assumed neutrino production processes in the universe and the values of oscillation rates and parameters measured in terrestrial experiments. As we will see later, proposed ultra high energy neutrino detection experiments can distinguish between the types of ultra high energy neutrinos hitting the Earth and therefore probe the predictions of neutrino oscillation physics at the very highest energies and longest traversal distances. Ultra high energy neutrinos can also probe the interaction rates of neutrinos with matter at massive energies. In recent years, significant work has gone into predictions for the cross sections and interaction rates of ultra high energy neutrinos with matter, both within the standard model and in models that assume various types of physics beyond the standard model. By detecting ultra high energy neutrinos and measuring their interaction rates with matter, we can verify or undermine the standard model at incredibly high energy scales. There are also many more theorized interactions and characteristics of neutrinos that could become observable only at ultra high energies. Neutrino self interactions, neutrino dark matter interactions, neutrino dark energy interactions, and far more besides. Of course, to pursue all of these exciting possibilities, we first need to be able to detect and characterize ultra high energy neutrinos. So how can we capture the highest energy neutrinos traversing our universe and crashing into our planet? Well, it's an incredibly daunting prospect. Ultra high energy cosmic rays are predicted to impact the Earth at a rate of one per century per kilometer squared. This incredibly low rate and the fact that neutrinos interact only weakly with matter makes the detection of ultra high energy neutrinos very challenging. One either needs to instrument a large region with many detectors or have a few detectors that can detect over a very large region. Lots of different types of detectors are proposed to finally detect ultra high energy neutrinos. These are in interactions with water, 
ice and air. Today, we will focus on the detection of ultra high energy neutrinos using radio wave pulses and proposed experiments such as GRAND 200K. Although the flux of ultra high energy neutrinos at the Earth is incredibly low, their energy is extraordinarily high. We're used to being told that low energy neutrinos can pass right through a light year of lead and hence usually pass right through the Earth without interacting. However, the interaction rate of neutrinos with matter rises with the square root of their energy. The energy of ultra high energy neutrinos is so high that they actually have a significant chance of interacting in just a few kilometers of rock. And the Earth is essentially opaque to such energetic neutrinos. The grand experiment is set up on a mountainside facing another mountain range. As ultra high energy neutrinos skim the Earth's surface, they pass through one of the mountain ranges. Ultra high energy tau neutrinos interact in the mountain rock, creating a tau lepton. Since the tau leptons are of such high energy, relativistic time dilation allows them to survive long enough to tunnel out of the mountain rock, decay in the air, and create showers of charged particles, including electrons, positrons, pions, and kaons. As these showers propagate in the Earth's magnetic field, they emit a focused radio pulse in the megahertz frequency range. This radiation can be detected by a huge field of radio antennas on the opposite mountainside. The energy of the initial ultra high energy neutrino can be estimated from the integrated energy of the shower. And since the radio pulse is strongly focused, the directionality of the pulse can be used to determine the directionality of the incoming neutrino within a solid angle significantly less than one degree. That helps us to pin down where ultra high energy neutrinos originate in our universe. Because the expected flux of ultra high energy neutrinos is very low, we need a huge detector to increase the chances of detection. Therefore, GRAND is designed to cover a total area of 200,000 kilometers with antennas, making it the world's largest radio array. The GRAND Proto 300 demonstrator, a 300 antenna engineering array, is under construction near the town of Lenghu in the Quanghai province of China. The next stage, Grand 10K, will consist of 10,000 antennas. It has a planned construction start date of 2025 and will be the first stage of Grand large enough to provide the first chance of detecting ultra high energy neutrinos. The final target stage, Grand 200K, planned for the 2030s, will consist of 200,000 antennas. These antennas will be set up in roughly 20 different, favorable, radio quiet locations around the world. This experiment will detect ultra high energy neutrinos traversing our universe, or upend our understanding of particle physics in the ultra high energy regime. For years, the technique of radio detection of ultra high energy particles has been explored by experiments like the Pierre Roger Observatory and LOFAR. Now, many experiments such as GRAND, BEACON, TRINITY, TAMBO, and Taroga M plan to use similar techniques to detect and study ultra high energy neutrinos. The radio detection of astroparticles is experiencing a renaissance thanks to drastic technological, theoretical, and numerical advances. Advances that could finally unlock and study the highest energy particles traversing our universe. So the science case for hunting down ultra high energy neutrinos is clear, and many scientific collaborations are dedicated to building huge, costly, intrusive experiments to detect and study them. However, the sheer scale of an experiment like GRAND represents a huge logistical challenge. Massive, invasive, robust antenna arrays must be installed in remote regions around the world that are isolated from human radio signals. However, what if there were a more environmentally friendly, less intrusive and more sustainable way to meet our research goals? What if huge radar arrays could be replaced by a forest, not of man-made antennas, but of trees? This may sound like a fairly wacky idea, but such is the vision of astroparticle physicist Stephen Prohira. It turns out that trees are remarkably efficient broadband antennas. During the First World War, the US Army Signal Corps 
established a chain of special receiving stations in different locations to copy and record enemy and allied radio messages. And some of those stations were instructed to test the efficiency of growing trees as receiving antennas. Behind an unassuming shack in thick woods near the edge of the District of Columbia, Chief Signal Officer George O. Squire and his team demonstrated that it's not only possible to receive signals from European stations through a tree, but that a tree was as good as any contemporary man-made aerial and induced far less static interference in the associated audio output. Squire found that by driving a copper nail into a tree two-thirds of the way up its trunk and running a wire to simple readout electronics, Squire and his team were able to listen to enemy and allied transmissions using an oak tree as an antenna. Trees contain water full of ions, which is a fine conductor. Radio signals can couple to that water and drive currents, allowing the tree to function similarly to a man-made dipole antenna. Since Squire's initial experiments, many scientists have noted the ability of living trees to function as antennas when augmented with simple toroidal coils. And studies have even shown that multiple trees can act like phased radar arrays. Studies of jungle trees have shown that instrumented trees outperform manufactured antennas for specific frequency signals in terms of both signal strength and signal to noise ratio. In some cases, by up to 20 decibels. Recent patterns even demonstrate active research into utilizing trees as efficient antennas in the very high frequency range, from three to 300 megahertz. So could a forest of trees replace a field of man-made antennas in an ultra high energy neutrino detection array? Like Grant, it's an intriguing and beneficial possibility. Trees are robust and massive and hence show excellent performance as broadband radio antennas across a huge range of radio frequencies, from very low frequency to high frequency, and can be instrumented with minimal readout electronics to detect radio signals without damaging the trees. Creating such broadband antennas in the lab is challenging. If scientists can utilize forests, they would not have to manufacture, install, and maintain thousands of radio antennas. The mountainous wilderness locations isolated from human radio signals sought by scientists looking to site an array like Grant are regularly covered by huge forests. These forests have a clear line of sight to the horizon to detect tau decay radio bursts. Studies also show that many forests have a uniform distribution of trees dictated by the diameter of tree foliage and that foliage has a minimal impact on the propagation of radio signals. It should therefore be possible to closely replicate the layout of an antenna array like Grant simply by instrumenting certain trees within a wider forest. Perhaps radio arrays like Grant don't need to be built. They've already been grown. Allowing nature to provide our antennas is clearly a very attractive prospect. So why isn't this the default plan going forwards? Well, there are still significant hurdles to determining whether we can use forests to detect ultra high energy neutrinos. Firstly, numerous large forests at isolated locations around the world need to be identified and the strength of human based background radio signals at those locations needs to be assessed. In a world where humans are continuously looking to exploit the natural world and encroach on unspoiled areas, the number of these locations is dwindling. Secondly, the impulsive radio bursts produced by tau decays from neutrino interactions is intrinsically broadband, with higher signal strengths and wider geometric acceptance at higher frequencies. Although trees show impressive signal performance at frequencies up to about 30 megahertz, further studies of the efficiency of trees as antennas at very high frequencies are required. In addition, vertical trees may struggle to pick up horizontally polarized radio signals produced by charged particles traversing the Earth's vertically oriented magnetic field. Additional studies are required to understand the signal polarizations trees are sensitive to. On top of all this, there's a laundry list of logistical issues that need to be assessed and overcome before a forest can be instrumented as a neutrino detector. The uniformity of trees at a particular location needs to be assessed. In a dense forest, at a remote location, the ability to power readout electronics using solar panels may be hindered by dense foliage 
and a lack of access to the open sky. Do weather conditions at a particular location impact the efficiency of trees as antennas? All of these matters need to be assessed. The possibility of using the forest as a neutrino detector is intriguing, but far more exploratory work needs to be done. We stand on the verge of discovering the highest energy neutrinos traversing our universe and pinning down the astronomical sources of the highest energy particles bombarding our atmosphere. Studying these messengers will give us unparalleled insight into the ultra high energy universe and test our current knowledge of astronomy, cosmology and particle physics to, and hopefully beyond, its breaking point. Perhaps the best route to finally pinning down these ultra high energy visitors is to turn to the natural world and align the interests of particle physicists, astronomers and conservation experts in maintaining and growing an ultra high energy neutrino detector for the next generation. Rather than cutting down forests to fuel progress, perhaps we need to restore and bolster them to travel even further into the dark forests beyond our current comprehension. Such a proposition would seem to sit very well with the moniker of GRAND. The possibility of using the dense, uncharted wilderness to peer into the similarly uncharted regimes of our universe is an intriguing one. Utilising the forest as a neutrino detector allows the natural world the opportunity to attempt to understand itself. I want to know what you think, because you're the scholars of enlightenment that I do this for. So please take a moment, if you wish, to let me know down in the comment section. And if you like this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, setting up notifications, and sharing this video more widely. I can't tell you how much these simple actions help me out and how much I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being scientific. Thanks for being bad.